you're a an outspoken dude. You're not scared to give your opinion and, and act like you know and be authentic. I think it's awesome. But also, your coach be awesome. Very, well, like I've known Braves forever. Does he does he call you into his office every morning? Like how do, how much interaction does he ever ever have to shut you down or tell you, hey man, like that's enough? I've actually had it from more coaches than um, than Vrabel. I, Vrabel. I think here's what I think about Vrabel. He is a huge social media guy. He loves the attention. He loves all that stuff. On Busting with the Boys, we talk about all the time how Vrabel is probably our number one fan by far. <laughs> He's always texting me and Will little little snippets, little Twitter snippets, little Instagram snippets. But he does him and John especially. They do a good job of putting me in my place when I need to be put in my place. I have so much respect for the two of them. The way they've come in, changed the culture. I've, this is, he's my third coach since I've been in the league. And uh, I've been on the same team, luckily, for the last seven years. And and by far the best culture I've ever been a part of. Rabel does a great job. John brings the right guys in there to uh, so we can just keep going in the, in the direction, the, the trajectory that we want to go. So I think there's, you know, you know how it is when you play. Like, there's some things you want to say, but you don't say and you, you kind of toe the line. I think the three of us uh, have towed the line plenty. Yeah, the two and of I, us I, definitely. I'll be getting a nice text from Vrabel after this, as I always usually do on the McAfee show. So uh, it, it's, it's a full – I enjoy it. I enjoy – at least he's talking to me, right? Yeah. Well, Anything shout out to Vrabel, by the way, if he's watching this. We're big fans, dude. Okay, we're big, oh, big fans. I love, he's watching. We love what you're doing. Um, what was the culture shift that he brought in there? Because obviously we see uh, the boxing gloves of practice and him – uh, obviously has the full padded uh, uh, like a flat jacket on on game day taking <laughs> pass rush and everything like that and it seems like he is you know like a part of the locker room almost but he's like the guy like the leader of the like it feels like that's a coach that I would want to play for At, the, watching from outside it's like this guy seems like a guy that I would want to play for for sure I think I think you've nailed it on the head Vrabel is definitely that dude goes out there puts the little pads on I remember my first year I had like an ankle issue or something I was dealing with, something petty. And uh, I didn't practice with the boys in India. I had to practice with Vrabel. Fun fact about practicing with Vrabel, it's way harder than practicing with the boys. <laughs> but Vrabel, Vrabel comes in. He put, he's got his stupid vest pad thing on. And he's running into me and he gives me the chest and lets me, lets me punch him a couple times. And then like the third time, he's like, all right, one more. Like set inside out, make sure you punch. And the guy takes off with the Jets. And like does like some sort of move on me and beats me around the corner that I'm not expecting it on. He look kind of looks back at me like still fucking got it. <laughs> <laughs> and, I was like, and that was like literally my first like one of my first real interactions with Braymore. So it, he's he's a dude's dude, but he he's a he's a top of the dude's dudes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's right where he needs to be at the head coach. He do, I, I don't like. I can't imagine him. I can't imagine him in Houston listening to Bill O'Brien tell him what to do. Because he's an alpha male. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure. I'm sure that got a little hairy once in a while. I know they're boys, but I'm sure it got hairy. Oh, jeez. Hey, you also transitioned. I know at your time in Michigan from Brady or from Rich Rod, who I know Pat knows well, to Brady Hoke. Like, how was that? How different are those guys? That had to be a dream, by the way, going from Rich to Brady. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, they were both, I'll give them both of, uh, they were all right at best. I mean, I, you know, Rich Rod came in and the poor bastard didn't have, didn't have a good sleep the whole time he was in Ann Arbor. I don't know if you guys know much about Michigan, but it's very much like, you know, the Bo Schembechler, Lloyd Carr, like we need to do the, what the old school stuff, run the ball, all that stuff. And that's great. But Rich Rod comes in, he runs a spread offense. He gets guys like Denard Robinson in there, really talented individuals. But the guy didn't have a fair shake with the boosters and all that from from the beginning. Brady Hoke came in, who's like the Fred Flintstone of all the coaches. Like, he, but it, like all he was missing was Barney Rubble. Like he was happy go lucky cat dude. He was a nice firm circle, firm stomach on the boy. You know, uh, had a had a good group of dudes. A big smile on his face always. Every Thursday before games, him and his wife would make pizza. And I told him I like chicken on pizza one time, and literally that might have been the end of our relationship. He absolutely <laughs> hated the fact that I said I like chicken on pizza, but they, they were they were good dudes. Um, everybody wants mi at Michigan someone to be Bo Schembechler, and we just haven't found that yet. I'm sure eventually they will. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what John Harbaugh, what his his list looks like as far as how long he'll be there. Um, you gotta get a, gotta get a quarterback. Gotta get gotta get going out there a little bit. Yeah, because we're we're falling from relevance. We're, we're not very relevant anymore. Yeah, two thousand four was the last Big Ten championship. Yeah, it's tough. It's hard to swallow over here when I was in the dark years. Like I'm sure some Michigan 
alum now will watch this and be like, you don't know anything, Taylor. You never knew. You never were a part of the good times. And he's right. I, I, I never won when I was there. I was for the dark ages. The I was th- one tiny bright spot. I've been to Ann Arbor though, and it is gorgeous. Like I very much understand why people that went to Michigan uh, act as if Michigan's better than everywhere else. Because after going to Ann Arbor, it was like this place is better than everywhere. Else. There was it was so nice. The the athletic. That's why whenever people fail there, it's hard to believe because. There's a $500 million football facility that just got built. There's billionaires just stumbling out of bars at that place. Like, it is just, when you go to Ann Arbor, it's a different place. It was, everybody's very nice to me there. It was awesome. And then you see, like, the failures. It's like, well, can they win? Like, why can't they get it figured out? And it, hopefully they'll be able to. Who knows? Because Ohio. And they, got, they got Jordan, too. They got, the, they got great sponsors. It's not like they're Adidas. When I was there, we were Adidas. <laughs> Not great. But you got, you got Jordan now, the first school to ever be sponsored by Jordan. You got like the best facilities, like the facilities that have changed since I've been there. I mean, they had good facilities when I was there too, but it's unbelievable. They literally have this thing called a car wash. They finish practice and then they walk in this like freezing temperature water, like this 42 degree water, and they have to walk. Like it's a four or five minute walk right after practice. It's like, who looks into that kind of recovery stuff? It's unbelievable. It's a great school. The, the town is unbelievable. It revolves around the football team. It's If you want to go play big-time football and you want to be known and loved and cherished, Ann Arbor is the place to do it. I just don't know. I just don't know how to get that shit going. Yeah, you guys stink. The um, <laughs> Tennessee <laughs> you don't deserve it, by the way. At, at, because of everything I just said about Ann Arbor, I, don't, I expect somebody will go in there and win. I assume it's going to be a coaching change.